good morning, welcome, good evening, wherever you might be. And today I want to talk to you about the newest update on Microsoft Teams Rooms on Android. And a little bit about Windows, just in case. Fresh back from holiday, big news, lots of announcements. We'll cover them on MTT AMA in two weeks' time. And you can sign up for that at aka.ms forward slash MTT AMA. But today I want to cover the news on what's come in release 2.2 for Microsoft Teams Rooms on Android. So let's have a look and see what we've got in the um, the lineup. So here we have our release notes. We jump to it here. So some of the things are the home screen refresh. And this is to make it exactly the same as Microsoft Teams Rooms on Windows. So six icons, calendar moves from the left to right. We'll see this in a second when we go side by side. Bluetooth beaconing, um, room tip in the bottom corner. And a new feature again, which is been rolled out to both platforms, Windows and Android at the same time, joined by QR code. So this allows you to walk up with your mobile cell phone, scan the QR code and open your Teams meeting and join it. Now this will work inside the meeting or outside of the meeting uh, in your tenant. So if a guest comes into your organization, they scan that code, it allows them to do that. Just remember, hot desking QR codes on, on Teams display and panels outside are only internal to your org. Whereas this code on the device now on the front of room and on the controller allows you to do that. 4K HDMI local content sharing. So this is only outside of a call, so not during a call. And it's also hardware dependent. So if the OEM supports it, then you'll get that local display. And also if your screen supports it, if you have edit minders, that could all be limiting the resolution or extenders, etc. So you need to make sure that the hardware supports it, the software supports it, the screen supports it. Any in, in, anything in between uh, supports it as well. Give feedback support. So this has been improved in line again with um, Teams desktop on the web, mobile, Teams rooms and Windows. You can then enable feedback comes internally. And again, some improvements on HDMI content sharing on the platform. So that's what's happening on Android. You can just take a quick look at Windows as well, just to give you a comparison. Release five. Some things are different here. They're using now the new Teams client in the back end, like you have on your desktop. Zero touch deployment with autopilot and pro management portal. You don't need that in Android. You've got the ability to, um, <laughs> yeah, there's my Apple bringing in uh, gestures, but being able to deploy, set it up, and out of box experience on an Android device is a couple of minutes. And you can use remote uh, login with the code from the device and sign it in through a browser or sign in on the device itself. Or things like Neat Pulse, you've got full remote control. So again, remote control has been launched for Pro Portal on Windows. When it's outside of a call with Neat Pulse, it will work during a call, so you can help support your users anywhere. Change the language on uh, Teams Room. Uh, so this changes the language. So if you want to set up three different languages, because you have multiple people in the uh, office that you, you know, use different languages, for example, and you see here that the language is reverted to the default when it restarts. So maybe that's English and you change it to French, after a device restart, it will go back to English. Skype for Business has been eliminated now, and all the settings have been taken away. Um, so if you are still using Skype, do not upgrade to version 5. Meeting chat by, by default and gallery view, again, you can set that on uh, Android as well. And then we have the same feature, released at the same time, join meetings with QR code. 4K scaling. Uh, so that's different to what we have on Android, because that's content share. This is just the display being able to scale to 4K. We've had that on uh, MTRA for a while. Guest join ID, um, it's just a new pop-up, so rather than having a drop-down uh, Teams or, or, or Zoom, it's now an either-or button to make it a bit clearer. I want you joining. Uh, meeting ID and passcode, that can be enabled to, uh, you know, extra layer of security on your devices. And again, that's already on Android. And end users can switch the Teleframe on or off using the stage roster. Now, things like Neat Symmetry on Android doesn't use that because that's fed into the feed. The 8, 15, 24, if you use Neat Center, for example, they can do that into the one stream. Also, there's a note here that you need a WebView runtime version update. Uh, or some of those features won't work. Not sure what features are on there. But anyway, so let's jump through and see side by side what we have on the devices. So in the current build, 2.1, this is what we see. We have our device front of room display, we have our central room controller, we have a calendar on the left, and we have four icons. Now, if we went into a more option on the device, we would see some other buttons and settings there. 
Now let's jump forward. And then again, the front of room, that's always had up to six icons anyway on the front of room. If you have a front of room touch enabled device or you're using something like a neat board, you'd see those icons there anyway. Now, when we jump to the new 2.2 build, again, the front of room doesn't really change. The only slight difference we have there is the tool tip at the bottom uh, left about using proximity join, etc. And then, as you can see, the controller has a big change. So again, you're going to need to update your user guides potentially on here to help people understand that this change has happened. So we have now six icons and on there, when I go to my more, so I've got join by ID on the home screen, which is great. And I go to more and I can then see I've got the options there and a nice trans transition on the background there as well. You can see that. Let's have a look. That's, that's the key on the home screen refresh. That's the most major change here on, on 2.2. Uh, and this is available in TAC, and we'll go through that in a sec. I had to push that update. What other features do we have released? Uh, so we have the join by mission ID and QR code. Now, this can be enabled or disabled. So we can go into the settings and into our Teams admin settings. This is under general. And you've got the option to turn this on or off. So we can turn it on, and as you can see, it immediately appears there. And again, auto accept meetings, uh, so auto answers. The invite, remember, auto answer has been taken away from MTRA, which is a great companion join. Obviously, we've got our default wallpapers. Custom wallpapers is coming in the next release, hopefully in 2.3 in the next release or at some point. Other new options we have here. Um, again, there's that um, require pass code for all meetings if you want it. Uh, I mean, you know, again, some unique features that we have on Android are the max occupancy notification. So if you've got this paired with a panel outside the room, you can send notifications outside, use a people count on the camera technology to show it inside as well. So some quite cool things you can do on Android today. So yeah, that's the only really major change there is being able to enable that QR code. And that's not intact yet. So you have to do it per device. So again, using a tool like uh, Neat Pulse is a great device to uh, driver to do that for you. So nothing else has changed on this side of things. So now if I go back to the homepage of the panel we will now see that we also have the qr code on the on the home page there as well so users can scan that and yeah, let's do a demo so this is in my demo tenant my mvp tenant i'm going to schedule a, a meeting on my corporate tenant and let's call it 2.2 overview and i'll add just a different mtr so i get a team's meeting so now i've got a team meeting in my phone I'll open my QR code scanner because I've got to add it to my favorites and I'll scan the pad. So now this has opened up Teams. Uh, do you want to meet now? Do you want to cast content? So I'll do meet now. Remember I enabled it for auto answer. So it's answer the device. So now we have the device in a call. And again, from my phone now, I could share content. Let's share a photo. That, for example, final day in Universal Studios where I've just come back from vacation. So really easy to now share from my phone into the room, join a call with a QR code. Very, very simple. So that's joining my QR code. What else do we have to show? Can't really show HDMI local content sharing. That is what it is. Actually, the neat devices do not support that just yet. Uh, that will happen hopefully in a future upgrade uh, and the give feedback so we click on the bottom corner and Nothing happens when I click on there So that is does say in here on the guide that you need to set it up in PowerShell feedback policies. So let's just jump back to What I'm looking at to show you the reference so back here in the give feedback So it does say you need to set it up using PowerShell. So you click here and you manage feedback policies Okay, this is interesting. This is something new as an admin, you can control which users do it. Uh, so whether it's org wide, you grant the policy. Okay, so it does require some work to be done. Uh, surveys needs to be enabled. If you want to collect screenshots, here's a policy, adding custom feedback. So maybe we'll do a separate video on this, on just setting this up. That might be easier to do that and explain exactly what is on there. There we have it, 2.2, available through TAC. So now let's show you Actually, what's great to show you would be what about how do we push that update out to our, our out to our users? So we go into TAC and we go to our devices, uh, Teams and Android, 
and we find, for example, my Mango Room, which is my 2.1 device. I go to Health, and I can see C available updates, and I can push this. Now, this one also, as a part of the latest update, push it out to the pad. So again, a single click update to push it out to the device. Now, this will happen within the next 15 minutes. You can look at the history. You can see it's queued. And it will just happen at some point. Neat will be pushing out the 2.2 build of software to the preview channel this weekend and then go to stable the following weekend. So if you want to leave it on auto updates and do nothing, it will then push it out automatically. However, if you want to create rings um, or tags, etc., you want to further delay uh, the update. If you want to manually control how this device gets updates, you go back to the home page here, select your update. And then what we can do is choose what automatic update window we use. So general, validation, or final. Now, some of this is software, some of this is firmware. So you need to be very careful on what you do. You've also got the available windows for maintenance hours. That's also set in a configuration profile. So it'll apply it during these times, for example. But if you've got a device, validation is as soon as possible. General is 15 days for software, 30 days for firmware. Uh, and then final is um, 45 days for software, i.e. the Teams app, and 90 days for firmware. So just, uh, just note down the different uh, validation rings so you can push that out and control it with there. Just quickly while I'm here, the configuration profiles. Um, so when we look at one here, so we can see you, when you have that maintenance window and also what day you want to run it. And also coming very soon to Neat Devices, we will enable the daily restart if you want to enable that feature as well. Now, what I've noticed is the daily restarts uh, are actually tied to the maintenance window as well. So with Neat Devices, uh, our updates happen between 1 and 5 a.m. So we don't want any uh, device restarts during that time. So we would probably advise you to apply your update maybe from 10 to 11. Now, you can't do that here because of your maintenance window. So if your maintenance window is maybe slightly different, let's say everyone goes home by eight o'clock, then you can then choose, let's say 8.30 to 9.30 for your restart. So the two are actually combined. So you must be able to set one and then set the other. Then at between one and 5 a.m., the neat auto updates will kick in and apply any firmware updates or any software packages that have been deployed, for example, the 2.2, which will hit preview, for example, Saturday night, Sunday morning. So that's coming soon. Uh, that we're testing that internally. And then we'll roll it out to, with Microsoft to various different rings. And we'll have a support article on that, on how you uh, set this up to not conflict with neat updates. So there we have it. That's a full list of features that we have in the 2.2 build, latest software, and also the latest neat firmware, 24.2 which is the current GA build. Any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks for watching.